Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata. This is a car that's got a lot of ink out there as well as quite a few test drive videos already and it's finally my turn to drive it and having owned a couple of these cars, I have to be honest, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one drives on my favorite windy mountain road. thing I thought of when I sat behind the wheel and started driving this car was how much like the Miatas I've owned before this feels. Now I had a first and a second generation Miata which is quite a few years removed from this one. There was a big generation in between and so this car while it's all new from the ground up it feels remarkably familiar. And it should. The new MX-5 Miata brings with it the very same time-honored recipe that made the first one it hit some 25 years ago. It's a classic front-engine, rear-wheel drive roadster, lightweight and simple, down to its bones. But what's new is its styling. Whenever you have a car that's become iconic, redesigning it's always a gamble. Do you go easy and evolve it? Or do you take risks? Here, I think, Mazda went somewhere in between. It has heaping helpings of new details that stretch the envelope quite a bit. In fact, there's little or nothing to tie it to the designs of the previous generations with exception of its size and proportions. And to that, this new one's actually shorter by almost three inches. The LED headlights of our Grand Touring Tester are very angular and they frame a grille which is contemporary of Mazda's Kodo design language. At the rear though, its taillights are, I think, somewhat derivative of other designs such as an older BMW Z4. Other angles and creases here are something I still see as a bit unexpected and I'm still not sure I'm on board with them yet. Wheels on ours though were 17 inch alloys and a dark satin finish which I did like. It weighs in at about 150 pounds less than the last generation but is 2 inches wider which gives it a lower slung appearance overall. This is an awesome feat that this car survived for 25 years without gaining a foot in every direction and a thousand pounds like most do. The interior of the 2016 Mazda MX-5 is where I started to immediately start fault finding though. Its design and look are subjective and based on everyone's eye so I'll leave that one to you but its execution falls short in so many ways. But first, as our tester was fully loaded, it had leather seats which were heated and well finished with red accent stitching. These were good and quite comfortable for the many all day drives I spent here. Now your passengers however might complain about the huge hump in the floor for the catalytic converter, as mine did. When we start getting to the larger picture, the parts bin nature of this cabin really kills it I think. The steering wheel is good, but some things like the switch gear and the infotainment system with its console mounted puck are right out of other Mazdas, made to fit here, logic be damned. Because of the console design, these parts bin infotainment controls are well aft of your hand, which forces you to pull your arm backwards to use them. In so doing, your elbow hits the cup holders every time, which gets annoying. Yes, you can pull them out of that spot and mount them to the center console, but then they dig into your knees. Unless you have drinks with you, you want to throw them in the center console storage area, which is behind you and too hard to reach when driving. And that is your glove box. There isn't one in the dash. Also behind and center is the CD player. Really? The CD player couldn't have been put in the dash? For that matter, why couldn't the infotainment controls have been put up there too where it's natural to use them or let us use the touch screen while the car is in motion? So yeah, using the system is frustrating but at least it sounds very good being the premium level package. And while a car like this also seems a silly place for driver aids like blind spot warning and lane departure warning, it had it and it worked very well. So overall, technology gets 4 or 5 stars. Now, it sounds like I'm bagging on this car already, but these are genuine gaffes, most of which I think could have been avoided. On the other hand, one could say a car like this always comes with compromises, and honestly, I would agree with that. And alas, it's not all bad. Riding along out here at speed, one thing you'll notice is how quiet it is. Now, I do have the windows up, and that's mostly because I have a microphone here, and I don't want too much wind noise, but even with the windows down, you can hold a conversation with your passenger here at 55, 65 miles an hour and not really have any issue. The aerodynamics and the design of this uh, really do play for a nice quiet cabin. 
Putting a soft top up and down is easy and simple and for most drivers can be done right in the driver's seat. Shorter drivers in our office could not make the backwards reach over the windscreen to tamp it down though and had to exit the car to do it. Trunk space is impressive I think for this car and the well is fully lined which I couldn't say for my old Miatas. The nice size is in part though because there is no spare tire here but you do get a tire puncture repair kit. Overall, the interior, I think, is very much a comfortable place to live, work, and play, though you do give up a lot in ergonomic storage and even some levels of material quality here for the privilege. In that way, it earns only 3 out of 5 stars. The chassis of the 2016 Mazda MX-5 may just, however, be its saving grace. It comes with the latest evolution of the company's front-engine, rear-drive architecture comprised of a double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link rear. Suspension is mounted to subframes front and rear, while its powertrain components are all tied together with a longitudinal backbone structure to keep it all feeling solid when you really start to push the car and do what it does best. Drive! One thing the Miata has always been known for is an approachable handling that gives you the pure roadster sports car experience and what I mean by that is it's not fettered up with a lot of adjustable this and drive mode that it never has been and so far Mazda has held out and kept from dipping their toes in it this car still it's just simple it's well balanced it's light it's flingable and best of all it just gives you the feeling that you're pushing it a lot harder than you are even when you're not, and that goes to the thrill and fun factor. You can really exercise this thing's muscles and not break all the laws of physics or the laws of the land. The steering on this is just absolutely precise. It's very lightly weighted. It doesn't have that overly heavy uh, sensation that a lot of sports cars sort of give you. You can tell that it's electric, you can tell that it's power assisted, it's not trying to hide that, but it's just the right weighting and it's just the right balance to where it gives you the kind of feedback you want when those tires really start to get to the edge of their limits. And the transitions, when this thing lays into the corners, it just feels very well balanced. A day of driving this car with its top-notch chassis made me forget all my complaints about the interior details. It really does bring all the refinement and happy-go-lucky goodness from the previous generations to the modern day, and for that, it earns 5 of 5 stars in the chassis department. Motivating the new MX-5 is a 155 horsepower 2.0-liter Skyactiv 4-cylinder engine. It does come this year with less horsepower by about 12 horses. Torque is, however, up by 8 to 148 pound-feet. The good news here is that I really didn't notice a difference given the lighter weight of the car. has never been accused of is having too much horsepower but it's always had enough to be fun and this car carries on that tradition that's well been part of the whole family since the beginning it's got enough power to make it fun to drive and exhilarating yet well it's never really been called fast but that's not a bad thing here but really the best part about it is the sound. This thing's got a sound and a feel to it that just makes you want to squeeze it raw and do this all day long. They've really done a good job in, well, just making it sound good, making it feel good. And that's what it's all about. The 2016 Mazda MX-5 with the 6-speed manual is rated by the EPA at 27 MPG City, 34 MPG Highway, and 30 MPG combined. In my week with it though, even including this mountain day of video shooting, I achieved 31 MPG combined. More than it promised. 
There is talk of Mazda offering a more powerful 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine here and that would be a welcome thing, but as I already expressed, the 2 liter is more than enough to put a smile on your face. In scoring the powertrain, I can't help but to give it 5 of 5 stars. When you step back and look at it, touch it, and live with it, the MX-5 is a well put together piece, which you'd expect coming from a factory in Japan. The paint finish is good, the body fit is good, and it felt solid all around, even on rough pavement. And that's saying a lot for a convertible of any price, so for quality feel, it earns 5 stars. Rounding it up for the MX-5, I have to say I like it a lot. Well enough, in fact, it goes on my I'd buy it list for 2015. I like it that much, even though I'm still not 100% jazzed about the styling yet, but you know, the last generation, I didn't like it much when I first saw it, but over the years it grew on me enough that it also went on our I'd buy it list when we tested it last year. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one the nod, even though it might take me a while to fully get my arms around that. That said, let's look at the specs. As you can see here, the price on this one were near fully loaded here with virtually everything on the top end model. And even here, I think this represents a great value because where else are you going to get a sports car at this price that offers everything this entire package does? Fuel economy too, very good, 31 MPG for the week, which I think is pretty good considering all the hard driving I did in the top down, that usually hits the fuel economy. So all in, we have a value of five stars. And when you put that together with everything else we've talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the week. Plus the I'd buy it list. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Man, this is so much fun. I could do this all day long. Well, friends, if you like the test drive you just saw today, click on the link right there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test drive one, sometimes two cars every single week. So there's always something new. So stay tuned.